Today we're talking about Mothra, but I don't have access to a Mothra figure at the moment, so I improvised. See, 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 it, it, it's a butterfly. Mothra was a movie I did not see until in my teens on this four-pack sci-fi creature classics. This set also contains the giant claw. But that's definitely a story for another time. Mothra started development when producer Tomoyuki Tanaka was given a story idea from Awao Mori. A few months later, Tanaka got three novelists to write a story about a giant moth. Takehiko Fukunaga, Yoshi Hota, and Shinichiro Nakamura all wrote one third of the story. The story was serialized in weekly Asahi newspaper under the title Mothra and the Luminous Fairies, which started publishing in January 1961. Mothra was subsequently turned into a movie directed by Shiro Honda, releasing on July 30th, 1961. Mothra's special effects were handled by Eiji Tsuburaya, who always turns in a great work. So that's the backstory of Mothra. Now the movie is about a monster named Mothra. Nah, I'm just messing with you. The movie is actually much more about a trio, two reporters and a linguist trying to stop a businessman from profiting off of two little girls. No, not like that! Mothra, as a matter of fact, is barely in the movie. The larval form doesn't appear until about 45 minutes into the movie, and the imago state doesn't appear until 15 minutes before the end of the movie. The plot begins with a ship caught in a typhoon beaching itself on Infant Island, an island that has been used quite frequently for atomic testing. A search party finds them on the island, only to discover none of the crew have any effects of radiation. While doctors discuss this with the sailors, the audience meets Fukuda and Michi. Fukuda is a reporter for Nito newspaper and is a rather light-hearted character, played by Frankie Sakai. Michi is played by Kyoko Kagawa. Michi is Fukuda's photographer and has a good on-screen chemistry with Fukuda. The two bounce off of each other very well. The sailors said that there were natives on the island that helped them survive by giving them some sort of red juice. The story uh, with the headline, Mysterious Natives on Infant Island, has become a top story. It was such a big story, even I heard about it. Look! What, you're not convinced by, by this newspaper? I mean, just look at it. I mean, no, no, look at it! The editor of Nito News tells Fukuda to get a statement from the Relisican government. Wait, Relisica? That's not a country, is it? Wait, what? Relisica is a fictional, well, maybe not anymore, country that is a metaphor for both the United States and the Soviet Union. They deny knowing anything about the natives on their test site, Infant Island. They also say there are no plans for an expedition. But this quickly changes when Clark Nelson funds an expedition to Infant Island. He locks journalists out of the expedition and demands all research from the trip goes through him first. Nelson is played by Jerry Ito. Ito characterizes Nelson as a truly awful person and a slimy businessman. But before that, we meet linguist professor Chujo, played by Hiroshi Koizumi. Chujo is a person who is very staunch on his feelings and how he studies, and he is opposed to the research embargo. The expedition departs for Infant Island, with Fukuda stowing away and becoming a member of the crew. The ship arrives at Infant Island, and the expedition crew lands on the island. Fukuda wanders off and discovers... Wait, wait, no, 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 that's not right. A lush forest that impossibly exists on this irradiated island. Chuju goes exploring the island and finds a cave of overgrown fungus and strange writing on the wall. Chuju then gets trapped in some killer vines and activates his silent alarm. What type of silent alarm is that? As Chuju is losing consciousness, he notices two small women looking at him. He then wakes up on the ship and mentions the two women. Fukuda coins the term Shobijin. The Shobijin are played by Yumi and Emi Ito. They perform as a duo under the name The Peanuts. The Peanuts' performance are iconic to the role of the Shobijin. The characters have gone on to be in the majority of Mothra's appearances to the point where in some movies, the Shobijin would not fit into the story, but there are still twin women who are connected to Mothra in some way. The next day, another exploration of the island is conducted and Shujo believes that the silent alarm is what brought the Shobijin out last time. Yeah, I'm not taking any chances this time. I'm not going to be unprepared. Yeah. Chujo's theory is proven correct when the Shobijin appear right in front of the expedition crew. They appear to communicate through high-pitched sounds. Nelson orders one of the Relisicans to take the Shobijin. The Japanese crew tries to stop them. Nelson says he knows a producer who will want to put them in a movie. 
Suddenly, the natives of Infant Island appear around them, using a song to intimidate the crew. Juju is able to grab the Shelby Jin and release them. The natives then appear back into the jungle. The expedition returns to Japan and Fukuda and Michi are reunited. Fukuda and Chujo talk and Fukuda says he noticed a map of Infant Island in Nelson's room on the ship. And Chujo shows a rubbing of the writing on the cave wall. Fukuda notices a cross symbol. Chujo says that in a Polynesian dialect it translates to Mothra. Nelson goes back to the island and lures out the Shobi Jin with the silent alarm. And they grab them. The natives come back out, but the Reliscans fire at them. Some are killed while retreating. One of the natives that was shot is able to get to a large room and start chanting Mothra. A rock face falls, revealing a large egg. Images of the Shobijin start to flash all over the news. The editor is angered at Fukuda for not mentioning them. Fukuda explains that the expedition had agreed not to mention them because they didn't want any harm to come to them. Nelson puts on the Secret Fairies show, which draws in the crowds. The Shobijin are flown into the stage in a big spectacle. People are getting really, really excited over this. Then the Shobijin sing Mothra's Song. Mothra's Song is one of the most iconic songs in the Toho Kaiju series, maybe of the kaiju genre. The song has gone on to appear in several of Mothra's appearances, most recently appearing in 2019's Godzilla King of the Monsters. Chujo feels that the song feels familiar as the natives on Infant Island are praying around the egg. Miji tries to get information about the Shobijin from Nelson, but he is refusing. Fukuda and Chujo enter, demanding Nelson to stop. The argument continues as Fukuda says he will go to the press. Nelson relents and lets the group see the Shobijin, but no cameras. The Shobijin are revealed to be able to speak Japanese, and they say there is nothing that can be done for Japan as Mothra is coming to rescue them. Just after this, Mothra emerges from the egg. This is a very interesting detail. Mothra is not an evil character. In fact, if the movie was from the perspective of the natives, Mothra would be the hero. This really sets Mothra apart from the rest of the Toho Library, which are usually monsters created by nuclear energy, ancient creatures awakened because of man's choices, a figment of a child's imagination that is used to stand up to bullying. Yeah. And monsters who are just angry at humans. Well, those aren't bad things for storytelling, it does set Mothra apart. The story is published and it makes front page news, including the Mothra is coming and there's nothing we can do about it detail. It's right alongside the story where people are questioning how there's tiny women from an irradiated island. Nelson calls the story garbage as reports of a large object floating in the South Pacific come in. There's a really cool visual here of Mothra chasing the carriage. Mothra then crashes into a passenger ship and breaks it in half. Nelson is blamed for the ship because of his refusal to release the Shobijin, but of course he denies these. Fukuda and Chujo sneak in to talk to the Shobijin, and the two say they cannot control them. Chujo goes to some scientists to make a material that stops a telepathic bond, just as a fighter pilot spots Mothra heading towards Tokyo. Realistica supports Nelson in keeping the Shobijin as the JSDF bomb Mothra in the sea. Convinced that Mothra is dead, Nelson is resistant to using the telepathic block, but relents finally. In a complete shock, Mothra is still alive. What? Who would have seen that coming? Mothra is alive! Go away. Mothra emerges in a lake and busts through a dam as Mothra starts heading through Japan. Realistica condemns Nelson and asks for the release of the Shobijin. Shibuya undergoes rapid evacuations as the JSDF mobilizes into the city. Artillery fires at Mothra, and to a total shock, it doesn't work. Stop calling me! Nelson gets away with the Shobijin in a bag and makes a run for the airport. Wait, their flight's still going out of Tokyo? Mothra scales Tokyo Tower, knocking it over, and begins to form a cocoon. The military continues to search for Nelson as he gets a fake ID and gets on a jet for New Kirk City, Relisica. The next morning, with a complete cocoon hanging off of Tokyo Tower. The military rolls in atomic heat ray guns. The cannons fire, and the cocoon is set ablaze and seemingly destroyed. Nelson arrives in a small farmhouse in Merlisica. Nelson removes the telepathic shield, and the Shobijin continue to sing for Mothra. Then, completely unexpectedly, the cocoon opens and Mothra emerges in an imago state. No! Mothra's wings cause wind to blow cars off the street as she starts heading towards Relisica. Radio broadcasts start to turn on Nelson as Mothra approaches Relisica. Nelson and his goons get in a car with the Shobijin and a gun. 
Fukuda, Michi, and Chujo fly Pan Am to Relisica, but the flight is is rerouted as Mothra attacks New Kirk City. Nelson, while on the run, ends up in a small town. People recognize him and start to yell at him. Nelson panics and sees images of the natives as he pulls a gun out and aims it at the police. He fires at them and hits one. Nelson tries to seemingly take a hostage, but is gunned down by the police. Michi, Fukuda, and Chujo arrive at the town and are able to get the Shobijin back. Chujo notices the cross silhouetted by the sun on top of the local church as bells ring. He realizes that it looks like the symbol from the cave wall. Michi says the bells remind her of the Shobijin singing. Chujo is able to get a cross painted onto an airport runway and have all the church bells go off at the same time. And Mothra seems calmer as she lands at the runway. Chujo, Michi, and Fukuda run onto the runway and release the Shobijin and Mothra takes off. Mothra returns to the infant island as the natives sing for the Shobijin and Mothra as we fade away from the island. So that's the plot. When Mothra came out on July 30th, 1961 in Japan, it was very well received. Even when the film came out dubbed in the United States in May 10th, 1962, it was also well received. The movie actually has an unused ending. Due to a deal with Columbia Pictures, the film would have American scenes, but due to budget problems, Toho made a different ending where Nelson escapes to Takachi Homine. Toho sent Ishiro Honda to Kagoshima to film it. The scene would have had Nelson falling off a cliff, possibly by Mothra going by this concept art. The production crew used a dummy of Nelson and threw it off a cliff. The scenes were shot for the alternate ending, but the footage was never developed. Mothra as a character continued on into this Godzilla series starting in 1964's Mothra vs. Godzilla and then made subsequent appearances in Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, Destroy All Monsters, and stock footage in Godzilla vs. Gigan. Mothra was one of the monsters rebooted for the Heisei Godzilla series in Godzilla and Mothra Battle for Earth. Mothra also got a trilogy of films called the Rebirth of Mothra Trilogy, mostly focusing on Mothra's son, Mothra Leo. Mothra got three different versions in the Millennium series. In Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters All Out Attack, Mothra is a guardian monster of Japan alongside Baragon and King Ghidorah. In Godzilla Tokyo SOS, Mothra returns. Tokyo SOS also features the return of Hiroshi Koizumi as Chujo. He has a nephew who is part of the Kuryu ground crew and has a grandson who is inspired by Chujo's move to paint the airport runway and use a school desk to summon Mothra to fight against Godzilla. Wait, you could just do that? Mothra also appeared in Godzilla Final Wars alongside the Shobijin. Mothra made a cameo in Netflix's Godzilla anime trilogy. Mothra's latest appearance is in 2019's Godzilla King of the Monsters. Mothra has had quite the legacy that's lasted nearly 60 years, and will continue on. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've always wanted to draw the Mothra symbol because I always thought it looked really, really cool. So I'll see you guys later. There you go. Oh no. Oh no. No, no!